everyone, my name is Hannah Van Alster, an artist and a basket maker. Today I want to talk to you about willow varieties. Why grow willow in the first place? I'll show you which varieties I grow and why. Willow has been used forever really, um, all through human history for making baskets in the Northern Hemisphere. Because it grows easily there, it's, it was very widely available and it was easy to coppice and um, to use it year after year. So over the last few centuries, basket makers have been specifically selecting willow for basket making and they've been selecting for um, growth habits, flexibility, bark colour, ease of um, stripping the bark off the willow for making buff and white willow. So we're very lucky that now at this stage we can fall back onto those varieties. They're still there, they're still being grown, they're still available in a lot of places. There are five major categories within the willow varieties. There's hundreds probably thousands because they cross pollinate as well but there's five major categories the one is the first one is purpureas um, you have triandras you have, have albas americana you have viminalis they are sometimes crossed to make hybrids they are even more strong and um, vigorous usually uh, to grow why would you go through the bother of actually growing your own willow? Well, I have found it very hard to source willow in Ireland and I know that it's the same across the world really for a lot of people. Um, so um, having your own supply there that you know it's there, um, growing it to um, the standard that you want, uh, growing the colours that you want, um, all that is, is a major plus when you're making baskets. There are a few suppliers but it's not always right beside your door. It's, you're still talking about shipping, um, availability, and a limited amount of varieties available. Also, I found that going through the whole cycle of growing, harvesting, um, drying, grading, soaking, making a basket, selling a basket, that going through that whole cycle is something very, um, nourishing and something very special. I love going out and uh, walking through my willows, touching them, harvesting them, um, going through them, selecting them. You just have that little bit more of a connection with it um, that you wouldn't have otherwise. I cannot be certain that the, certain, the, the same varieties will grow the same for you. Growing willow will be very different in certain different climates, different soil types. Um, the orientation of the sun where you are, um, amount of rainfall, all that kind of stuff will have to be taken into account. So um, I have selected my willow over 15 years now and I have tried different varieties. Some have failed, some are doing better than others. So I've, I'm, I have selected over time. I think if you're going to start planting willow, you should do the same. Just try, try a few varieties, see where, what works. If there's one or two varieties that do really well, you plant more of those. And over time, you just kind of slowly develop a range of different colors and types that you, you really, really like and that suit your soil and climate. Willow will need sun, water, soil. Um, sun, they do way better in full sun. Um, some of them take partial shade, but I would uh, recommend full sun. The soil, um, they're very easy on the soil. If you have a very rich soil, you'll have to pick your varieties um, to be smaller because they'll grow too big for basket making. So what we're looking in a willow rod is not a massive big rod that is um, 10 foot tall. What we're looking for is mainly between um, four and six foot uh, range, maybe a little bit higher if you're doing more uh, bigger work. Um, 
and we're looking for a rod that's nice and skinny to weave with. So um, a farm soil, a soil that has been farmed um, is usually a little bit too rich. Um, so, but in general, um, willow is very forgiving in soil. It does need water. It doesn't have to have its uh, roots in water the whole time. In fact, it don't like being in the water the whole time. But you do need regular rainfall, um, maybe uh, soil that um, keeps the water well. First of all, let's start with these skinny ones here. They're Lancashire Dicks. Um, they're very fresh and green looking at the moment. They will dry to kind of a grey, nearly blue. Um, I love them to bits. They are a little bit hard to go for me here in that they don't... Uh, two years ago we had a very uh, hot summer and they got a little bit dry. And they're, since then they're a little bit smaller than, than I would want them to be. Um, but they're extremely flexible um, and they also have um, a very pronounced curve in the way they grow um, which I love to work with and experiment with and make like round bottom baskets and stuff like that. Next we have this one it's a Viminalis I would usually not recommend a Viminalis for basket making because it is very pithy on the inside so the pith is quite big uh, which means that it, is, it doesn't have the strength in a rod it gets quite limpy and you can't if you put a border with it down with it it will uh, kink in places you don't want it to and it won't stay in place but what uh, this one dries to a very nice yellow it's the only rod I have found that actually dries yellow it stays yellow so I use a lot of that in um, my skibs for color next here is the Vitalina it's an Alba variety um, it looks very nice and yellow I love it um, it goes very well here for me uh, pity that it doesn't dry yellow it kind of goes uh, chocolatey brown for me um, but it's very flexible, a very useful uh, willow to have. Next here is our brown mall. It's a triandra variety, which is a very strong variety, um, quite disease resistant. Uh, it doesn't grow too big. Sometimes it does grow too big. For me, it seems to be fine. Um, the color kind of fades into a light brown, uh, but it's very flexible willow. Next one up is Irish black. I actually um, don't know what family it is from but I am guessing it's a, a, a purpurea. Um, it is maybe a little bit uh, big but the one advantage to this one is it's very prolific. Uh, there's a lot of rods on each stool and it dries green. Again, it's the only variety that I have seen that actually stays green when it's dry. Next one is our Salix uh, Sanguinea. Um, it's a Flanders red, this one. Um, it's kind of light brown in color. I love it. It's uh, very similar to the Vitalina, the yellow one at the start, when it dries, even in color. Um, very disease resistant, vigorous, and it can be too vigorous in uh, rich soils, but um, it does really well here for me. The next one here is our um, Daphnoides. It's an Alba variety. Um, you can see it's the color really. It stays a nice dark purple, has a little bit of a white bloom on it as well at times which is beautiful in, in a basket. A little bit vigorous for me, you know, it grows, you know, as you can see, some of them are quite heavy, but I, I just kind of live with it for, because of the color. Next up here is my Brittany blue, and there's some Brittany green in the bundle as well. Um, they're, they're purpureas, the same family. The, I both love them, they are, um, quite tall, a little bit taller than the other purpureas, which I like. 
um, the Brittany Green um, stays kind of browny green. Um, the Brittany Blue dries quite blue. Now my blue isn't as pronounced. I've seen it way more blue in colour in other places, in other soils where, where it has grown. But I still love it just for that hint of colour. Next one here is my Dickey Meadows. Um, it's such a versatile um, rod. It's again, it's a purpurea. I could have picked packing twine, which is very similar for me. It grows very similar. But for me, the Dickey Meadows is a little bit more prolific than the packing twine. So um, that one came out on top. Um, it's, it's an all rounder, um, skinny rods, very flexible. Uh, I love it. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can like the video or subscribe to my channel so you get regular updates when I post a new video. I'll leave links below the video of um, my free course on basket making. It's a beginner's course, takes you through each step of making a basket. Um, I'll also have a link down there for my online classes um, that will bring you from be be complete novice to a fully fledged confident basket maker. I also want to leave a link below if you want to learn more about growing willow, about the varieties I discussed a little bit more in detail, I'll leave a link there to a page on my website that you can look them up and uh, have a look there. But for now, keep on weaving.